In this age of new normal, online is not your only option. Because new normal means new learning modalities and new learning possibilities. Let Dibal make learning offline possible with Smart Class. Smart Class contains pre-made daily modules sequenced according to DepEd's budgeted teaching and learning calendar. Each module has a specific lesson duration and has day markers to guide parents and teachers in the asynchronous learning of learners. Inside the modules available in Smart Class, you will find the following elements. First, learning competencies are identified in the module openers. Kickstarters are available to test students' prior knowledge on the subject matter. This set of activities, found at the beginning of each lesson, may also serve as motivational activities. Parents of preschool to grade 2 students will also find notes to parents which contain tips and pointers on how they can guide their child while learning at home. Redefine your student's learning experience with the integration of augmented reality technology into images and illustrations available in Smart Class, making learning more interactive and exciting. At the end of each module, Long Quiz is also available to assess students' understanding of the lesson. Smart Class also features Wrap Up, a lesson ender activity that applies the constructivism theory of learning. In wrap-up, students are expected to summarize the lesson on their own using a graphic organizer. You may also evaluate the quality of your students' learning by letting them practice their learning in real life through GRASP's formatted performance tasks. The content of Smart Class is designed for the entire academic year, and it is available for five major subjects. All aligned with DepEd's K-12 curriculum and covers the most essential learning competencies prescribed by DepEd. Secure your own copy of Smart Class before classes open. Contact marketing at debalgroup.com to know more. Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our Learn at Home FB Lab session. For the discussion today, the topic will be on integrating innovative instructional materials with remote teaching and learning. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions on the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using the hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this evening, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. As a certified Apple teacher, he is an advocate of e-learning, literacy, teacher education, student affairs program development, and curriculum development. He is a published researcher and national trainer with interest on learner-centered instruction and has continually trained teachers and education leaders from the preschool and tertiary levels. Just recently, he published two professional education textbooks on technology for teaching and learning and the teacher and the community, school culture, and organizational leadership. He was born in Bacolod City on April 20, 1996. He has a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English and currently working on his master's degree at the Telesal University, Manila. Moreover, he is a licensed professional teacher and a member of the League of Catechists and Religious Educators of the Philippines, or LCREP, at the Ateneo de Manila University. Having served the academy for almost five years and in various capacities, namely primary, intermediate, and as tertiary teacher. At present, he is connected with Colegio San Agustin Bacolod as a senior high school teacher and college instructor. 
Aside from being a full-time teacher, he is also a professional lecturer in the licensure examination for teachers in various review centers and universities in Bacolod City, Metro Manila, Quezon Province, Iloilo Province, Dumaguete City, and Zamboanga del Norte for the subjects curriculum development, educational technology, teaching profession, social dimensions of education, and facilitating learning. He is currently the educational consultant of all of the schools of the Oblates of Notre Dame sisters all over the Philippines. Mater Calmelia Aca Academy and L. Ecole Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Paul Ray Mark and Salsa. Thank you very much for that generous introduction. Good evening, Kabibal. Welcome to this another webinar series by Bival Publishing House. We're very happy to have this opportunity to share with you something on all about instructional materials with Bival's with Bival Publishing House. So, how are you? I hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is okay. This is another good is another good opportunity for all of us to another a good opportunity for all of us to share with each other our thoughts on, on all about instructional materials in the new normal on how to integrate it with our remote teaching and learning. Allow me to share my screen so that it would be easy for us to understand what we will be talking about. So this is part of the Learn at Home series of the Bals Publishing House. And this evening, we will be talking about instructional materials on how can we integrate it in our remote teaching and learning, given that we are in an era of disruption in the era of COVID-19 pandemic that uh, compels us to reboot, not only to reboot, but to rewire education in times of pandemic and beyond. I've shared with you last time also thoughts on the new normal in terms of higher order thinking skills as well as parents parental involvement in the new normal so this time i will be talking about instructional materials with you i hope that you would learn something from me this evening so i am sir paul you can call me sir paul that's most of the most of my friends and most of my students and most of my colleagues uh would call me as Sir Paul, so you can call me Sir Paul. As mentioned, I am currently connected with Colegio San Agustin Bacolod, and also I am a certified Apple teacher. So that's why you've seen a memoji, my memoji. So this is my school. I would just like to flex my school. I'm currently connected with Colegio San Agustin Bacolod. This is a school run by the Order of St. Augustine on the province of Santo Nino de Cebu. So this is the school, of course, if you try to take a look at your schools, most of us teachers missed no, our uh, being in school. No, We've missed to be in school with our students. But sadly, because of this pandemic, we can't do it now. So that's one thing also that I've missed as a teacher, to be in school, to teach the students in front of me. But we are in a new normal, but we don't have any choice but to embrace this a new norm in education, this rewiring of education. Sometimes you need to be, to go with the tides of times in order for you to be happy because sometimes if you try to insist on something that you can't, sometimes you would got me frustrated and would only got me sad. So uh, one thing also that I loved with my school now is in terms of our mission and mission. And one of the mission of my school is to provide innovative instruction. But the challenge is on how to be innovative in terms of the new normal. Innovative instruction is sometimes something which is challenging on how to be innovative in the new normal on how can we still deliver innovative and quality education in the new normal. Allow me to begin in a premise that we need also to distinguish innovation as either as 
isolated or grounded innovation. So there are two. That innovation need to be treated as grounded innovation rather than as an isolated innovation. Because when we talked about isolated innovation, you are not considering all other aspects of innovation. That you are only focused on this. You are only focused in terms of creativity. You are only focused in terms of something that is new, that you want to introduce, but sometimes you forgot already that there are also many aspects that needs to be considered. So there are two, that it is either you are into isolated or grounded innovation. But this term, innovation, innovative instruction, is also a challenge posted by the our beloved chair of the Commission on Higher Education, J. Prospero de Vera, that we need that schools need to provide innovative instruction still in these times of pandemic and beyond. But sometimes there are teachers that is acting like this, no? Not all, maybe, no, so some, not all, is acting like this. That maybe we should try out to think out of the box, but they're telling us or they're telling many people that they would be thinking out of the box, but but then again, they're not doing it. But sometimes, no, if you are into the creativity area, that this is an innovation department, that they continue to blind themselves, that they are telling us of innovation, but then again, they are not working on it, that they are not showing it, that they are not doing it. But also, uh, there would some people who would tell us like this that some sometimes that in the corporate world they pay you big bucks for they pay you big bucks for uh, thinking outside of the box that sometimes we tend not to innovate simply because that we are still into this minimalist mentality that we are still into this minimalist mentality that we want for pay for it that we don't want to think it for more but we want to pay uh, that you you ask or we ask for uh, remuneration for it. But then again, in the teaching profession, we need to be innovative. If you love your profession, you need to be innovative as teachers. Also, that sometimes no, that there are also teachers who are innovative enough, who love to innovate, who love to try something new no, in terms of their instruction. But also, it's good to think about, my dear teachers, that this is a time for innovation. This is a time for thinking outside of the box on how can you provide alternatives on what you are doing before that can, you can't do it now or that this pandemic prevents you. That you need to think about many alternatives on how you can continue those practices in an innovative and in a creative manner. So that's one thing no, that I am challenging you. Another, uh, sometimes you know, as a team, as, as a team of teachers, we are like this. My team is having trouble thinking outside of the, the box. We can't agree on the size of the box, what materials the box should be constructed from, a reasonable budget for the box or our first choice of box vendors. Sometimes when you are in a faculty meeting, for example, then of course there are many innovations that, pop, that is popping out, but you can't uh, move into one. No, you can't only, you can't move into one decision simply because that you're have a lot of ideas, you have a lot of suggestions. But mind you, that's a good signal that many of the faculty is thinking about it. But do not be frustrated or do not be saddened that your innovation would not work, at least that you've contributed something, at least that you've contributed something. That's why I've started with the concept of this grounded innovation, that we are also fond of saying new normal, new normal that we are always talking about new normal and new normal. But also, you need to think about that this new normal is context-specific. When we say context-specific, that my new normal might not work in your new normal. Or let's put it like this way, that the new normal of my school might not work in the new normal of your school. So that's why we need to think about new normal as context specific and we need to think about new normal in terms of grounded innovation that you've started on what you do have what you practice before 
and what you can do now to improve that. But of course, copying from all other practices might be unhealthy because it may work with them, but sometimes it may not work with you. So that's one, that's a word of caution. But sometimes, uh, because of this mentality also, because of this pandemic, of course, this pandemic gave us a lot of anxieties. It gave us a lot of anxieties that many of us no longer wants to, no longer wants to talk, no longer wants to innovate. But also, there are teachers who is like this, that get back in the box and start thinking like the rest of us, that it's okay that we tend only to be minimalist on what is only available. Be contented with that. So that's something that is sad. Something that as teachers, dapat, eh, syempre, hindi natin tinagawa. Because we need to be innovate. But of course, that as teachers, once a teacher, you are forever a student. And that means that you need to continue to learn. You need to continue to learn. You need to continue to think about many strategies on how you can teach now in the new normal. So that's why it's good also to ask if you treat still teaching not as a bread and butter, but teaching as a vocation, as a mission. Allow me to continue that sometimes it's like this, thinking outside of the box didn't work, thinking in the, inside the box didn't work, maybe it's a defective box. And of course, no, there would be uh, people, there would be organizations who are into academic freeze, but also we need to weigh the advantages and disadvantages also of this academic freeze. Also, uh, they only taught me how to think outside of the box. I'm not trained for circles. And that is where flexibility will enter. That we are into an era of flexible learning, that we need to be flexible in terms of pace, place, and time on how can we deliver instruction. That's why we are into an era of flexible learning. Therefore, dito sa flexible learning as an overaching approach, because flexible learning is an overaching approach, that is where you will enter innovation. Because we are now into flexibility. So therefore, that is also a good time for you to provide innovations. It's also a good time for you to give, to suggest innovations on how your practices before will work now in the new normal. So up to the point that Dave can think outside of the box, Larry can think outside of the bag, Sue can think outside of the cup, Vinny can think outside of the balloon, Lucy can think outside of the duffel bag, Mitch can think outside of the mitten, we are ready for anything. And that is innovation. The moment that you give, that the moment that you give, the moment that you think, the moment that you suggest, the moment that you act, out something in a creative, in an innovative manner. And that is where also flexibility will enter. But also, we need to think about innovation in terms of curriculum, pedagogy, and technology. It must always be grounded in context. That we innovate, yes. But of course, you need to think about also on the availability of the students, the availability of the parents, and the availability of the teachers. What about availability? availability in terms of their readiness, in terms of the resources, and in terms of the skills that they do have. That's why for teachers, we are challenged to upskill, to reskill, and to cross-skill. And that is something that we need to begin, that we need to begin with that in order for us to innovate. So that's why innovation must begin or must always be grounded in context. So what is the context now? We are in an era that we fly we transition ourselves from residential learning. Residential learning means that we've transitioned ourselves from a classroom-based instruction, from a school-based instruction, to a home-based learning. That we are now into an era that learning happens at home with the learning partner, with the parents, with the caregivers, and with the grandparents who is helping us for this learning to continue. So that's one thing that we need to think think about. And that is one of the paradigm shifts that we are in now. Also, there is a lot of ways on how to do it, how to do residential learning. There are a lot of ways also on how to do it. But sometimes uh, it would be a challenging way. It would be a difficult way. It would be a hard way. But there is our way, our own way of doing it. And you need to think about that of your own way of doing it. Our way can mean so many things. It 
can be substitution that conferencing app and PowerPoint presentations instead of classroom-based learning and a chalkboard. If before you are fond of doing chalkboard, now you are into conferencing app and PowerPoint presentations. That's why we need to practice also and we need to introduce a skill for teachers on how to manage the virtual classroom, on how to teach in a box, like for example, in what we are doing now, that you can only see me in a box so how can you be engaging in terms of having classes in conferencing applications? Another, we are into alteration also, that we revise our syllabi, we revise our curriculum maps to identify now the most essential learning competencies and outcomes that we shifted from voluminous content into essential content that we shifted into many performance tasks into performance tasks that is now leveraged essential and interdisciplinary also another thing of course in terms of perturbations from residential learning to distance or blended learning and one thing that is very important now in teaching in the new normal is more of into restructuring that we've restructured a lot that we've shifted from the teacher-focused instruction to a learner-centered instruction. If before you are the man and women of the hour, now you are mere coach, you are now a mere coach, that the teacher's role now is a mere coach, that the teacher's role now is a mere facilitator. So if you are into content-specific, if you are into content dependence before, you need to be content sensitive now because we are entering an era of self-paced and independent learning. Also, another thing is very important is in terms of value orientation. That we've now enhanced school structures and learning processes with digital and mobile learning tools. So one thing that the teachers need to reskill that we need the teachers need to upskill and to cross skill is that they need to explore digital and mobile learning tools. If you are into online learning modules, if you are into online teaching, the, uh, it depends, of course, in the context of your school, you need to explore these learning tools that is available in order for your lesson to be engaging in the new normal. As well as in the printed learning modules, you need to think about activities and tasks on how to be engaging in this new normal. On how can you be engaging in order for you to have an achievement that the students need to be engaged in order for them to achieve, in order for them to achieve the competency that you ask for them to perform. So our response to innovation would lead us to a huge difference. If we try to focus only in terms of restructuring and value orientation, it means a lot for all of us already as teachers, that we need to have a paradigm shift in terms of our learning delivery, which is no longer teacher-focused, but learner-centered, and also our value orientation, that we need to explore digital tools, learning tools, remote teaching and learning strategies on how can we engage the students in times like this. Also, we need to have this innovation mindset, that we need to be more curious than certain, that we need not to be minimalist, that we need not to have this minimalist ideology, that we are only contented of what is available. That as teachers, we need to innovate for more, that you need to be more curious than certain. Given that we are in a VUCA ecosystem, in a volatile, uncertain, challenging, and ambiguous ecosystem, all the more that we need to innovate, all the more that we need to establish a disruptive proof infrastructure. Given that, uh, for example, community quarantine, the status of community quarantine would never be an assurance that you are into, for example, if you are into a modified general community quarantine now, it's not an assurance that maybe by tomorrow you would be into an enhanced community quarantine. So we need to establish a disruptive proof education now that no matter this, what disruption will come in along the way, 
you can still deliver instruction. So let us be more curious than certain. Do not be contented of the modules that you do have. Do not be contented that, okay, I will only provide them with this and that. And then uh, at the end of the day, you need to ask also yourselves as teachers, uh, did my students enjoy? Did my students learn something? Are they engaged with the material that I gave to them? So that's one thing that we need to think about also as teachers that do not be contented of what there is or what is available, but try to innovate for more. Try to innovate, try to explore many things that would make your instruction innovative. Allow me to continue. No normal remote learning that it entails paradigm shift. It entails paradigm shift in terms of content, in terms of coverage, and in terms of control. That we've shifted from voluminous, many reading materials, for example, or a very vast content into content that is now an inch long but a mile deep, as well as coverage that, for example, if you have a thick coverage like this, now you need you have only a few of that because we've identified the most essential learning competencies as well as control. One thing that is new also in the new normal in the world of teachers is control. If before the students can't go out, before uh, if the students can't go out, unless they've finished their writing or unless they've finished to write something. But now, you are no longer in control. You can't do it now. So that's one thing. If before the students uh, is listening to you, for example, there is total silence because they only focus to you, but now you can't do it. You can't do it now. So these are the three paradigm shifts that we need to think about in terms of content, in terms of coverage, and in terms of control. My dear teachers, a word of reminder. The goal of remote learning is to support top learning priorities and not to replicate the school day. So never replicate the school day because we need to consider also the attention span of the students as well as the brain breaks in terms of the learning task. The overaching approach, as I've mentioned, is flexible learning. We are into flexible learning, that we are flexible in terms of time, in terms of pace, in terms of place, and in terms of product. As long as the students achieved or uh, followed or complied the modules that you've asked them to finish, that's one thing. Also, you need not to, for example, for example, so it's maybe, uh, it's maybe pedagogically wrong of having for example, synchronous classes or live classes for the whole day for the students. So because you need to consider attention span of the students as well as the brain breaks. So remote learning is to not is not to replicate the school day. It's not all about having Zoom classes. So for example, from eight o'clock to five o'clock, it's not all about that. So remote learning is to support top learning priorities. We are now in a new normal with new gojis also. If before you are into pedagogy, you are into andragogy, teaching of the child, the teaching of the adult, be familiar also with the new gojis. Welcome these new gojis that we are into yutagogy, piragogy, and cybergogy now. Yutagogy, that you encourage learners to become more self-directed, that we are now entering an era that, they, uh, that all the more we are now learner-centered, and the teacher's role now is to facilitate, to design lessons, and to coach the students, as well as pedagogy. That we focus now on co-learning and co-creating, that the students can collaborate now online, that the student can also create something that would manifest his or her learning or the competency asked for him or her, as well as we are into cybergogy that it encourages learner engagement in an online environment. So yutagogy, piragogy, cybergogy. This is the new normal in education. Three components still is there. That in our remote teaching and learning, we need not to forget that we still deliver experience, that still we teach content, that still we ask students of an outcome. 
in order for us to know if they learn something. But also, it's good to ask the following. What will make learners enjoy despite the distance? Will my learners enjoy with the modules that I do have? Will my learners enjoy during my synchronous sessions? As well as what will more make learners more inquisitive and engaged? Am I still engaging in the new normal? In this remote teaching and learning, could I still elicit critical thinking? Or could I still ask questions to my students? As well as what will make learners qualified in the world of work? Or given, for example, a module, what will make learners qualified in the world of work? Or what will make qualify them to the next level? For example, they are grade eight now, they will be moving into grade nine next year. What will make qualify them to the grade nine? Or maybe I would only be giving a hard time to grade nine teacher that I was not able to develop these essential competencies to my students. So please remember these things, that even though we are into remote teaching and learning, we need still to deliver essential experiences, essential content, and essential outcome vis-a-vis these questions. What will make, make learners enjoy despite the distance? What will make learners more inquisitive and engaged? And what, what will make learners qualified in the world of work? But also, a word of caution, too much content in remote and flexible learning yields much frustration, both, both at the level of the teacher and at the level of the student, that at the level of the teacher, that you give content, that it takes you many preparation or a lot of time to prepare. But also for the students, brain break, attention span, you need to consider those things also. What the content is like in the new normal? Simplification strategies that increase comprehensibility of the learning resource. That our learning resources, our instructional materials now need to be simple in order for our students to comprehend as fast as they could to comprehend even though they are learning independently. So that's why we need to design or we need to look for instructional materials that is simple, that is easy to comprehend, that even they are learning at home alone, they could continue to learn it, that they could continue to follow and will not ask questions to you. So that's why my dear teachers, you imagine, you imagine, for example, you are hand, handling seven sections and then uh, there are learning modules at home and then they will send you text message. All these 40, for example, in one class, my 40 students and then seven sections. So 40 times seven, all of these will ask you question simply because that the material that you give to them is not simple and is not comprehensible. So that's why this means a lot for us, my dear teachers, that our content now needs to be simple so that our students can comprehend it easily. So therefore, you need to focus here on the need to know, not on the nice to know, and not on the nots to know, on the need to know. So how do we teach now in the new normal? Online learning, offline learning equals learning modules. So online learning, offline learning equals learning modules. One of the misconceptions is that for us, module is only all about offline, is only all about printed modules. So my dear teachers, be, uh, be uh, clear with this, no? that learning module is both online and offline that you create also a module online. And the module is not only all about offline because it's one of the misconceptions of teachers that oh, oh, I'm praying that most of my students will be into online because it's easy. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's still the same that you will be creating learning modules still online. So the Val, for example, do have this more school for online learning module that... This is a V-Smart, uh, this V-Smart school of the BAL is the learning management system of the BAL. And what's with the V-Smart school? It's uh, a learning management system, like among others. But one thing that is good with V-Smart school is that it makes class more engaging. Given that our students are digital natives, that they were, they are, they were born for the, with the internet. And also, 
these digital learners are also Gen Z learners. That these Gen Z learners are into a moto. They are into a moto that, uh, of course, they are into a moto of uh, try and see, that they want to try and to see. And also they are image driven and they are also image driven. So all the more that you need to make classes engaging. So uh, with this more school, there is already available or a library of gamified interactive resources as well as ebooks, but not the usual ebooks because the ebooks of the BAL do have a learn live or an augmented reality feature. Also, with this learning management system of the BAL, it do have uh, you can the teacher can monitor student attendance also, as well as not only the given material of the teacher. It do have also readings and supplementary materials. One thing that is good also is that it do have already ready-made digital curriculum, and that is aligned with the K to twelve curriculum. And also, uh, you can hold virtual classes also here. It can hold online classes and webinars with the live stream feature, and it can, uh, the teacher can also discuss online through chat with this vSmart school. So that is the online feature. That is the online module that you can create online learning module with vSmart school. On the other hand, if you are into a context, if you are into a grounded innovation, or for example, hinging from the idea of grounded innovation, you are into a situation that interconnect, internet connection is not possible, that you are into an area that uh, there, there is no signal. There is no signal talaga. So the VAL do have also learn at home kits that in this learn at home kits, it could provide you with test book, test booklets, activity sheets, the teach at home guide and all other supplementary materials. And also not only this learn at home kits, the VAL do have also this uh, self learning modules for the senior high school, as well as for the elementary students, as well as with the basic education from kinder to grade 10 until grade 11 and also grade 12, that it do have self-learning modules, which are already aligned with the most essential learning competencies. So uh, this is how we teach now in the new normal, that we are into learning modules, and these learning modules could gone into online, depending on your context, online or offline. If online, that is digital via internet, if your internet connection would permit, and you do have vSmart school. And if offline, you can have learn at home or the self-learning modules of the BAL. But one thing that is good with vSmart school, that it do have the capacity of having offline. Meaning, uh, vSmart School do have the capacity to give the students still the materials even though offline. So that's one thing with the vSmart School. So this is now teaching in the new normal that you need to identify online and offline. For what reason? For equitable access to education. For equitable access to education. But let's go back to the definition of what is a module. A module, according to Russell, in the year 1974, is an instructional package, meaning it's a package, meaning everything is there already. Everything is there already. And also, you need to think about that a module is a conceptual unit of subject matter, meaning a module is not arranged per chapter. It's not arranged per chapter. And also modules are designed to help the students accomplish certain well-defined objectives. So that is a module. You need to distinguish what is the difference of a textbook and of a module. That a module is a package, meaning everything is there. A textbook needs to have reinforcement by the teacher. It needs to be explained by the teacher. A module is all about accomplishing a certain well-defined objectives or, or competencies, and a chapter or a book is all about many competencies. Let's try to talk about it one by one. A learning module need to have a components, the following components, that you do have learning competencies, 
And these learning competencies are already unpacked. Means that it was divided already in terms of the difference of topics. And that's something that is challenging for teachers now on how to unpack it, on how to budget it in a week, for example, in a week, for example, and one thing to consider also is that we are into flexible learning. That on how can we be flexible in terms of achieving these competencies? But also, my dear teachers, we need not to forget that a module do have the following teaching and learning process. That they do have still teaching tasks, that the teacher gives input still, that there is instructional materials and resources. And of course, there are learning activities with instructional materials and resources, may it be online and offline. And of course, we need not to forget to assess that there is still assessment tasks with online and offline exercises and quizzes. Allow me to continue. The VSmart or the VAL do have also a framework that in the delivery of a learning mode, excuse me, in the delivery of a learning module, we need still to have a framework that is not only all about, for example, of putting videos, putting pictures, putting of handouts. It's not only all about that. A learning module, may it be online or offline, it needs to have a framework because sometimes that is one of the misconceptions of teachers that I will put videos, will put pictures. That we tend to make only a virtual library that we put all the resources there, not considering the instructional framework. That unlike the VSmart, unlike with VSmart, that we do have already content, and these content were arranged in terms of good instructional framework. That it follows a lesson opener, that is where the, there is lesson title, lesson description, and lesson objectives. Number two, there is the discussion proper or the module proper, that there is this module title, the description of the module, and you do have the let us start or the kickstarter or for Filipino paunang gawain, and it contains the motivation, review, and some diagnostic activities. And it do have also let us learn, that is where the input of the teacher or the teaching task and the activities of the students. And number three, the lesson ender, that there is wrap up, the performance task, and the long quiz. All of these are available in the BALS self uh, home learning kits and self-learning modules. But also, we need to think about interaction of key elements in education. That the content now is simple, that the role now of the teacher is coach, and the community needs to help in terms of remote teaching and learning. As well as we need to reframe the roles in terms of the modular delivery. That the students now are independent learners, engaging and interacting with content and creating new information. That the teachers before, you are the mere content uh, implementer or you are the mere source of content. Now your role now is to design the learning process and coaching students to become independent learners. As well as the school, the role now of the school is to support the learning process by supporting the teachers, the students, and the parents. Now, of course, we are into MELCs for the Department of Education. For K-12, we are into MELCs that we've identified already the most essential learning competencies. But allow me to highlight these things in terms of instructional materials. That in terms of instructional materials, we need to provide meaningful activities and scenarios relatable to the context of the students. What is meaningful activities? What is relatable activities? What is this relatable in terms of context to the students? If you try to be, if we try to be research based on this, we do have the following retention rate. If more on lecture si teacher, 5% lang yung retention rate. If more on reading si teacher, the retention rate is only 10%. If more on audiovisual si teacher, the retention rate is only 20%. Demonstration 30, class discussion 50, practice by doing 75, teach others immediate use of learning 90%. Hence, more retention rate if the students experience learning. How can you be experiential in the remote teaching and learning era? in times of pandemic. Remember cold? And we are hinged into that theory 
allow me to share with you the framework given by Dr. Fermin that we need to be experience-driven. That in our learning modules, may it be online or offline, we ask the students to discover to explore and to investigate the real world, that we design tasks that ask the students to discover, to explore, and to investigate, that we ask the students to explain, to clarify, to verify, and to justify why it works that way, and ask the students to solve, to improve, to enhance, or to remedy related problems. Also, that is hence from the learning theory of Kolb, the experiential learning theory of Kolb, that we ask the students to try out something, to reflect and to observe, as well as to conceptualize the meaning of the task that you've given to them, and that is where active experimentation will enter. Instructional materials are designed to facilitate the learning process, that we are into an era that we can't lecture that we can't give the content coming from us, but we are entering an era that we need to provide instructional materials to facilitate the learning process. Yes, you have still synchronous sessions. You have also asynchronous learning modules that would help the students to facilitate the learning process. That a one hour, for example, per subject in a week would not suffice. Hence, you need to provide instructional materials to facilitate the learning process. Allow me to share with you the following principles of instructional design. The first principle is that, of course, our instructional materials need to be aligned with, need to be aligned with the most essential learning competencies with the K-12 curriculum, as well as it's not only aligned with the K-12 curriculum, that our teaching and learning activities need also to be aligned with the objectives as well as of what we assess must be aligned with the learning objectives. So that's the first principle that we need to think about as teachers. That the module, may it be online or offline, need to be aligned with one another and it need to be aligned with the K-12 curriculum. Allow me to give you an example. This is an example of the Teach at Home Guide of the Valley. If you try to take a look, all of the components are there and it was seamlessly aligned with the prescribed learning competencies. Like for example, if you try to see in the picture, the quarter one and the week one, all of the competencies are aligned seamlessly with the different components. For example, in English, there is oral language and fluency, writing and composition, grammar, awareness, vocabulary development, reading comprehension. It is seamlessly aligned with one another. Another example is, for example, in the book Language and Literature of the Bal, that in every activity, that in every teaching task and learning task in that book, there is corresponding alignment from the competency coming from the curriculum guide or coming from the learning competencies given by the Department of Education. The second principle is that we need to think about the concept of building blocks, that the learning module that we are giving to the students, may it be online or offline, follows the concept of building blocks. What is this concept of building blocks? That it is all about the concept of modularity, that it is a story with different episodes, that you've divided the story into different episodes for the students to comprehend in an easy manner, which is easy to comprehend, means that your delivery online or offline follows a step-by-step -step process. Like for example, in the academic book of Bibal, it do have reading activities for the students, but it follows the reading instructional framework that there is pre-reading, during reading activities, and post-reading activities. It is not only that you give the students to read this and after that question or comprehension check, that it needs to undergo a process, pre-reading, reading activity and the post reading activity as well as with viewing pre-viewing activity you have the viewing activity and you have the post viewing activity it's not only all about that you give a video uh, already you give the video and without pre-viewing viewing and post viewing activity and also another for math nine that 
This is a self-learning module from Mathematics 9. If you try to take a look, one thing that is good with these self-learning modules that every activity are divided already or labeled with the days that the students will accomplish it. So you have days three to four. And so the concept of building blocks that it was it's clear already yung days na ma-accomplish ng bata with the use of these self-learning modules. Another principle is that our learning modules need to be interactive, of course. It need to be engaging. That's why I told you that we need to be experience-driven. Hence, that we need to interact, to be interactive and to be engaging. So if you will ask me, sir, how to be interactive, how to be engaging? How to be interactive, how to be engaging? Simply put, you empathize with your students. Try to think about what are what will my students think? What will my students think the moment that they receive the module? What will my students say the moment that they receive the module? What will my students do the moment that they receive the module? Or what will my students do the moment that they receive the module? Or what will my students feel the moment that they receive the module? Or baka sabi, uh, for example, no? in the, at the level of feeling, what will my students feel the moment that they receive the module? Galit. Galit. Bakit? Kasi in the module, you have many reading activities. Many reading activities. Purong basa, basa, basa. For example, one week module, you have 50 pages. Naku! Ano mangyayari sa mga bata kapag ganyan? Another good example, activity sheets ng home learning kit ni Vival. This is an activity sheet from grade 1. If you try to take a look, acting out a poem. So the learning module need not only to be that the students to read something and to answer in the paper. If you try to take a look, these are experiential and performative. That these are the activities that go, it's good in our learning modules. That uh, it asks the students to act it out. And also one thing that it also influences or provide activities for the child and with the parent. That it is a learning module that involves the participation of the learning partner, of the parents, or of the caregiver. Also, one thing that is very important in the learning module is go visual. Like for example, if you only put water cycle, the definition, and you did not give an illustration. So of course, given that most of our students now are image driven so that's one thing that you need to think about that our students now are image driven so example uh the lesson this is a supplementary material coming from the home learning kit of the ban uh the lesson is all about a storyline of plots so if you try to take a look there are pictures number one character profile the protagonist as well as the storyline is there it's there talaga and think of a new story for the character so that's one thing that we need to go visual. As well as the books of the Bal, it do have this augmented reality. Of course, many things are abstract. Even though pictures lang nga is abstract sometimes. That the students uh, love to see it as moving so that it can be engaging. So it increases the learner motivation if there is this augmented reality. Sometimes it's not video nga eh. Kasi if video, uh, makikita lang ng bata. For example, if augmented reality, the student can manipulate it. So increasing the learner motivation and integration of natural and digital worlds and excites the learners with imbues them with more motivation to study because it's not abstract for them because it do have an augmented reality. Another principle is to provide a deep dive. You give additional resources, opportunities for the students to apply it to real life situations and also it do have critical and thought provoking questions so for example in all the bals home learning kits there is this activity sheets and there is this graphic organizers that for example this one is on venn diagram that asks the students to have similarities and differences so it's all about it's all about asking the students to think critically of what they have learned from the learning module. 
as well as for language and literature. So this is an example of a performance task. And then it provide questions for reflection, answer to big question for the students. So also, of course, our learning modules need to be structured for independent learning. That even the students themselves, they can do the learning modules without the help of the learning partner, with the parents or with the guardians. So therefore, in order for us to have independent learning, we need to provide clear instructions, age-appropriate your activities and your assessments, as well as inclusive access. Like for example, uh, we need to be as thorough as possible. For example, in mathematics, if before you are fond of doing board work, now you need to be as thorough as possible so that clear your instruction mo. So with all of the visualizations, like for example, adding three-digit numbers in the supplementary materials of Ebal. So if there is uh, illustrations on how to do it. So we need to be as thorough as possible. One thing that I like also with, with the BAL, like for example, with the self-learning modules in mathematics for grade one, it do have the note to parents down under, note to parents and guardians on how the parent can help the kid in doing the activity in the module. So that's one thing that is good with the self-learning modules. And of course, lastly, we need not to forget feedback mechanism. So checkpoints, you need to think about if it is aligned to the objectives and you to validate how this module work with my students, how this module work with my students. So the home learning kit, it do have test booklets and it do have evaluative activities, questions, long quizzes that the students can answer. So holistic siya, completo. So that's an example. So allow me to wrap up my talk this evening all about the three aspects of learning materials. Number one, of course, you need to think about the technical aspect of a learning material. The layout, it's good, it's appropriate for the age level. The format, the font size, the platform, the audiovisual elements, the form, the writing style, technical. As well as, of course, not only all about by face value, kasi baka by face value, makikita mo lang ganda ang daming pictures. Pero pagtingin mo, hala, ano, tumali-mali naman to. So also, the pedagogical. Instructional material design model, it follows a framework. As well as the teaching and learning principles. And lastly, of course, the content. The content. That it's now all about the essential outcomes, essential content, and essential experiences. So my dear teachers, allow me to end with this thought that technology, yes, is just a tool. In terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, the teacher is the most important because you provide, you coach them with the learning, the, with the learning modules, how to use it. But also, a word of caution, the technology will never replace a teacher. But a teacher who doesn't use technology will be replaced by someone who uses technology. So my dear teachers, there's a challenge to be innovative in terms of delivering instructional materials and in terms of remote teaching and learning in the era of pandemic and beyond. So that's it. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Now we will proceed to the question and answer portion. Our first question is from Ford Celeste Dumas. How do innovative teachers help promote enduring understanding? How to promote enduring understanding? You, promote, you can promote enduring understanding, number one, by connecting it to their context that is relevant to them. Number two, if you provide good activities, activities that are relevant and task-based and developmentally appropriate to them. And number three, of providing them opportunities for critical thinking. That's it. Thank you for that question. Thank you very much, sir, for our next question. It is from Ernan Kiatshon. Why okay. do some schools do not offer tutorial classes to students during online classes? Uh, maybe it's all about school policies, <laughs> and we are not already all about that. 
uh, you can have tutorials if you want to. But then again, tutorials are to help the students who are far behind in terms of instruction. So that's one thing, but it's more of school policies maybe. Thank you for that question. Thank you very much, sir. And for our last question is from Miss Katrina David. What yeah. advice can you give to students, especially to parents who will experience online class for the first time this coming opening of classes? Good question. Number one, help the students to provide a routine. Number one, routine. That for how many months they are not in to having teaching classes, provide them with a routine to wake up and to mindset themselves that they are now in school, that even though at home, they are in school, to provide them with all of the resources and always remind them that they are in school. And number three is the role of the parents to check in with the students, to check in them in the morning, to check them in the morning and do not forget to check them also in the afternoon. Is your lesson all about today? Have you learned something today? What is that that is you find it difficult or uh, is there something that you don't like or is there something that uh, you, uh, you can ask to me? But of course, we need to have minimal supervision with parents, of course. Psychologically speaking, we need to have minimal supervision. So it's not all about that you have online class here and then this and then the parent is there beside with the student in terms of online class, you need to have minimal supervision because you, you need to teach them responsibility in the era of independent learning. So that's one thing that you need to do also as parents given this new normal. So thank you very much, Vibal. That's all the question we have for now, sir. Any last reminders to our viewers for today, po? Uh, be more curious than certain. Be innovative, my dear teachers. Thank you very much, Vival. There we have it. In behalf of Vival Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for this uh, for today for this very insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, sir. And to all our Vival viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Muli. Maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.